The restaurant was called The Great China. Its address uh, was 723 Webster Street. And it, the site is still there and it is still a restaurant, but it's gone through numerous ownership and uh, style changes. And it opened in 1943 when I was about two years old. And remember, that was in the middle of World War II. And uh, there were shipyards about half a mile away. So there were a lot of uh, workers who were not Chinese who had come to Oakland and the Bay Area to work in the war industry, the shipyards, the war building and war repair. Um, so it was really kind of a good time to have a restaurant because my father and mother were struggling. Uh, the family legend is that he borrowed $3,000 from a relative to open this restaurant, and he was able to pay that back in a matter of months. So that shows you the busyness of the restaurant, because I'm told, and I don't remember this because I was too young, that during lunch hour or dinner hour, the people would line up behind, we had a big long counter, and people would line up during lunchtime just to have a chance to eat at our restaurant. And ours wasn't the only restaurant like that, so it was really a busy time. Um, it was called The Great China, and it had both a so-called American menu, and it had a Chinese menu. And I remember the, my older sisters, and then eventually I, would, would type up on an old clackety typewriter with a purple ribbon the menu for each day that my father would mimeograph on a gelatin, a pan of gelatin, right? So it would be in purple ink and he would kind of, it would be a little printing job for all these menus that we had in each of the stations and seats. So, um, and that was the American menu and we would sell uh, meals for anywhere. My memory was that meals would go from something like 50 cents to a dollar and that would include soup and salad, uh, your entree with rice or potato and a vegetable, a roll and butter. I don't know whether they got a drink with that, probably a glass of water and a dessert of either apple pie, custard pie, uh, or jello or a scoop of ice cream. Now that's an amazing sort of full, that was at lunchtime, or dinner would be the same thing, and uh, we would serve things like beef stew, and meatballs and spaghetti, and roast beef, and liver and onions, and fried halibut, uh, hamburger steak, and that was a popular menu because of what I just described, this full course meal that people would get for 50 cents up to a dollar, dollar and a quarter, and then the Chinese menu was also available to people, but you know, my memory of the Chinese menu was that it was pretty pathetic. People would order it, but it wasn't what we can get today at Chinese restaurants in the United States, or even in Oakland Chinatown. And I think the reason for that is that um, there was just not a critical mass of people who were demanding real, authentic Chinese food. And there was this style of restaurant that the Great China was from 1943 to 1961 that served American stuff and served Chinese stuff you see. And we weren't the only restaurant doing that. San Francisco's Chinatown had some restaurants doing that. Quite frankly, I miss that kind of restaurant because it was so Chinatown. And you just don't, I, don't, I can't think of a Chinatown today that has that kind of a restaurant that serves, you know, the whole range of American meals or Western meals, as well as some really good Chinese food side by side. So a customer would have s such a choice when you think about it, you know. Um, and so my, my, my entire family worked in this restaurant, my sisters, uh, my parents obviously, um, and then we had some hired help, some cooks and some dishwasher, a dishwasher, pastry chef, um, a waiter or two. So in, in its busiest days we needed all those people, but as the business faded away after World War II and then into the 1950s, it was not necessary to have as many staff. 